Test, test. Amen. Good morning, everyone. I'm going to have you stand. We're going to go ahead and pray and get started. Sounds like I'm ringy dinging. You might want to turn me down just a hair. There you go. Thank you. Amen. <clears throat> well, we've got a, this is a special day today. We are going to be baptizing, I think, four people. I'm not sure how many we've got so far, but. As far as I'm concerned, if you haven't been water baptized since you believe you want to be baptized today, I will dunk you. I will dunk you. Amen. We're going to explain a little bit about water baptism and what it means uh, today as well in the service. So grab the hand of the person next to you. We're going to pray. Hallelujah. Still sounds a little ringy dingy to me. Uh, there's a scripture I wanted to read. Cut some of the. Mids and highs out. Testing, one, two. Test, test. Then turn a little bit of the gain up. All right. We'll get this straightened out so all you hear is me and not no ring. <laughs> Got one scripture. This is out of the Psalm 24, verse 7 through 10. I'm not going to read all, all three verses, but I will say this. This is verse 9. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Always wondered, what did that mean? Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Yeah. He compares your life as like a house with a gate in front of it. And in order to let God in, you've got to open the gates. Amen? Yeah. And the gates that you have are eternal. Now, whether mm -hmm. you accept Christ or have never accepted Christ, you still live forever. Where do you go when you don't have faith? That's, that's the question. We want you to know where you're going when you do. And we'll talk about that a little bit this morning, too. So lift up your heads, O ye gates, even lift them up, you everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. You have to be open to receive this this morning. God's not going to stuff this in you like a full turkey. You've got to open up your heart and open up your mind to receive from God today. You with me? Amen. He will never violate your will. He will not make you do something you don't want to do. I hope this morning you want to lift him up, praise him, and give him a little thanks. Amen? Who is this King of glory? Who is he? Scripture says he is the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. The Lord who created everything. This is the King that you serve today. Won't he take care of you? Yeah, I think so. Bow your heads with me. Father, we thank you this morning 
that as we open our hearts and our minds to you, as we sing and praise and clap and lift up our hands, as we focus on giving you thanks for what you've done in our lives, we just praise you. We thank you for moving and working because your word says you are enhanced. You are riding on the praises of your people. So as we praise you today, let your Holy Spirit move in us in a mighty way. We thank you. Praise you in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Hug somebody. Tell them Jesus is here. Hallelujah.
asked us to make a joyful noise in his honor this morning. So just make a joyful noise. No matter how you do, whether you sing, you clap, you dance, you stomp your feet. Just make a joyful noise to the Lord this morning. And sing hallelujah.
guys are pretty good. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. All the time. All the time. That's right. Amen. Thank you, Father. A beautiful song. A song about the sacrifice of Jesus today. He was pierced for our transgression. He was crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Yes, hallelujah. Be healed today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. He was for our transgression. He was crushed for our sin. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him. And by his wounds, by his wounds, we are healed. Oh, thank you for your healing this morning, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, 
sound really weird, but I just sense this by the Spirit this morning. There's somebody here that when you were a child, somebody put you in a room and shut the door and wouldn't let you out and scared you. And the Lord wants you to know that even when you were in that room in the dark by yourself, He was with you. And this morning, He wants you to know that He loves broken people. You know why? Because we're all broken. And He loves you when you're broken. He loves you when there's parts of you. I've been a Christian for over 40 some years. I know that's not very long to some of you. Some of you haven't been on earth 40 years yet. But I want you to know that in that time period, I've grown and God's brought me a long ways and I'm so thankful for that. Aren't you? For what He's brought you through? But I still have some broken things in me that He needs to repair. How about you? So this morning, as we sing this one more time, I just want you to... Close your eyes if you haven't done this already. If you're not standing, stand up just for a minute. And just lift your hands and thank Him for healing your brokenness. In Jesus' name. Father, we do thank You this morning. Hallelujah. That You were went to the cross. Took that terrible sin of mine. Oh God. And set me free. You were pierced for my transgressions. Crushed for my sins. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son. And thank you, Son, for sending your Spirit. We bless you and thank you this morning in Jesus' name. Thank you for healing all my broken places, God. I got a lot of them. Need you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. He comes to heal by your sacrifice and the life that you gave. Hallelujah. God is good. Amen. We bless you and thank you this morning, Father. Hallelujah. No, I mean really clap for him this morning. God's been good to you. Hallelujah. Father, we give you praise and honor this morning. Thank you, Father. Amen. You deserve it, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Hallelujah. Amen. This is heaven warm up. We get to heaven. We're going to be doing this all the time, y'all. So you might as well get used to doing it now. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to thank these people for their dedication and their, just their service to the Lord this morning. Thanks, guys. You guys are awesome. Amen. All right, turn to somebody and say, God is great. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. And you can be seated if you can. He is great. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Amen. Praise God. I'm going to have Ty come and we will take up this morning's offering. Hallelujah. A sleepy baby. She wants to do a, a birthday sing for Clinton. He's going to be 24 on Tuesday. I think we can do that. You ready? Happy birthday. All right. One more time. Happy birthday to you, Clinton. Happy birthday to you, Clinton. Happy birthday, dear Clinton. Clinton. Happy birthday to you. Never do that again. No, I'm just kidding. All right. You need somebody else to help you there? You got got somebody? Okay. All right. Hallelujah. I'm going to thank all of you for your faithful giving, man. I, I just am so thankful God's blessed us so much. As you already know, we uh, have to put a fire escape in upstairs. And uh, we had been told it was going to cost us about $1,700 to do this. And uh, while Chris was working at his new company... They showed him five of them sitting in the bank backyard. He said they said we could have two of them. They're brand new. They're for free. So I mean that's a, that's a God thing right there. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. So yes, you can give the Lord a hand for that. Yeah. Also, D D Step was telling me this morning we've been praying for her mother, and the answer is praise God. Amen. That's wonderful. Amen. Any other praise reports this morning? We've been praying for a lot of people. Martin. Martin got a new car and a new mower. Hallelujah. <laughs> praise God. So he's going to push the mower with his car. No, I'm just kidding. Ty. Okay. We'll definitely pray for that this morning. Bob. Bob. Yes. Kathy, you were gone, so we couldn't sing happy birthday to you. Yes, I know. We're well, not working today. 
When was your birthday? The 30th of June. Well, today. I know. I understand. <laughs> well, let's let's sing Happy Birthday to Kathy. Dakota's is Tuesday. How old are you going to be, Dakota? Dakota's going to be 12 on Tuesday. Hey, my birthday is November 28th. You can sing Happy Birthday to me if you want to. Oh, y'all don't want to. Wow. Well, let's sing Happy Birthday to him. Ready? A one and a two. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Kathy and Dakota, and anybody else that's having one. Happy birthday to you. Amen. Hey, you guys are getting pretty good at this. <clears throat> we'll just have to take you all on the road. Amen. Hallelujah. All right, Caleb. That's not his birthday. <laughs> oh, but he's here, yes. Carter. Wow, okay. Well, let's do this. Let's pray. You guys ready to pray? Amen. Gloria? Yes. Well, we'll rebuke that. That's not from the Lord. That's one place the enemy loves to get into your life is in your dreams. And if you start having nightmares, you don't have to. We've, been, we've prayed for people before. I think uh, we prayed for some just recently. And uh, the nightmares have either gone away completely or they need to continue to pray that they'll stop. But they've almost have stopped completely. Yeah, Bill? Awesome. Well, that is a praise report. Praise God for that. Amen. Amen. All right, if you've got your offering this morning, let's lift this up before the Lord, and we will ask the Lord to bless it and answer these prayers today. So, Father, we humbly come to you in the name of Jesus. We lift up all these needs that have been expressed today, and thank you for all these wonderful answers to prayer. Lord, we know you answer things in your way and in your time, and we submit ourselves and surrender ourselves to that, God, because Father knows best. So we ask you to bless this offering, bless those that give. We sow this as seed into good ground. And let it bring back a great, great harvest for all those that give this morning. In Jesus' name, and everybody said amen. 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 Hallelujah. I gave you my keys. All right. Uh, announcements this morning. Uh, we need help with Wednesday night Kid Zone. So if you'd like to sign up to just take a Wednesday night, we only need to probably have you do one every six to eight weeks. And uh, the kids are excellent. They're very attentive. And they do everything that you tell them to do. And why are you guys laughing? It, I'm speaking it out by faith. Plus, I have a nice big paddle in my no, I'm just kidding. But anyway, please uh, pitch in. We need you to pitch in for that and help out. Obviously, we're on summer schedule, so we're not having any of the uh, men's or women's fellowship groups right now. The... Um, Saturday night book fellowship is not meeting this summer. We'll start back, I think, in August is when we schedule all that to happen. So those will all start again. And then probably September, we will start having Sunday night Bible study again and uh, see how the Lord leads in that. That was an excellent st We went through the body of Christ. It was really, really good. If you missed it, you missed a good time. Amen. Now, today we have water baptisms. I'm going to go ahead and minister a short word because I want everybody that's being water baptized today to understand why you are doing it and what it's for and what it means. There is great significance behind being water baptized. So we will talk a little bit about that this morning as well. We'll go ahead and dismiss the kids. Children, you can go to kids zone right now. There's no kids zone this morning. I'm sorry. Because of water baptism, they're going to stay here with you. Isn't that wonderful? Don't look at me like that, parents. Somebody looked at me like, like a deer in the headlights there. Amen. All right, stand. We're going to pray. <laughs> Amen.
Glad to have you all in the house of the Lord this morning. Bow your heads with me if you would. Father, we thank you for your presence today. We thank you, Father, for the good things that you put in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, that you didn't buy us a life of misery and sorrow and constant crap, Lord, but instead you, you bought us a life of happiness and joy in the Spirit. Help us to discover what that means, Lord. As I'm convinced, none of us really know what it is. Help us, Lord, by revelation to know it. And by revelation this morning, speak to our hearts. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. You can be seated. Um, I do have a joke this morning. I do this with great trepidation. I'm not a construction guy, so this might have applied to me. Two men were measuring a pole. One was holding it up. The other one was trying to run the tape measure up the pole so he could measure how high it was. So a man driving by saw what these two were trying to do and pulled alongside in the mask. This, why don't you lay the pole down so it will be easier to measure? Doesn't that make more sense? Say yes. Thank you. So the two men laid down the pole and began measuring. As soon as the man drove off, one of the fellows said to the other, put the pole back up the way it was. I want to measure the height of the pole, not the length. These guys were smart. <laughs> Thank you, Scott. So that's your joke of the day. Copy that down. Where's the, where's the, yeah, you got to do that. And the applause sign. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I feel like David Letterman or something. He's not even on anymore, but, you know, Jay Leno, he's not on either. Why water baptism? Matthew twenty-eight nineteen is our first scripture. And this was... Uh, Jesus speaking to his disciples right at the end of the book. So this is one of the last things he said to his, his disciples before he was to, to leave. He said, go and make disciples of all the nations. Now, I think it's interesting. He said, don't go and make believers. He said, make what? Disciples. disciples. A disciple is somebody who is under discipline, who wants to walk with God through the hard times and the good times. Amen? A disciple is one who is faithful, who is at service, who is faithful every morning to give God a big smile, whether you feel like it or not. Come on, smile at me. If that joke didn't make you laugh, nothing will. But he wants us to be disciples, students of the Lord, students of the Word. He says, then baptize them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So we do this because we love Him. We're doing this because Jesus said to. He said for us to believe and be saved. Did you know this morning that you're only saved by what you believe? Do you know you're only saved by what you believe? Thank you. Now, this responsive church, I don't expect you to sit there like a bump on a log. I want you to respond. So I'll often ask you, amen. And then you respond, well, I don't know, but whatever. <laughs> we know that God's great salvation, listen to this, is free to those who believe. Are you believing today? Amen. It is not earned. It is a gift. Now, this is hard for us to understand. We think we go to work, we earn something. When you live for God, He gives you the football and you're up, it's up to you to run with it and do whatever. But God wants you to know His salvation is a free gift. Ephesians 2, 8, 9. God saved you by His grace when you believe. Hallelujah. And you can't take credit for this. No, you can't take credit for it. It is a what from God? It's a gift. Salvation is not a reward for the good things we've done. Look at me for a minute. God doesn't have a big scale in heaven that does this. So when you die, He goes open and He looks at a book and He says, okay, you did this much good things, so it's like this. That means you get to go in, right? And now you didn't, but you did this many bad things, that means you don't get to go in, right? All right. See, there is no scale for you in heaven. Aren't you glad? Some of you ladies are probably glad there is no scale in heaven, if you know what I mean. Maybe some of you guys don't like looking at the scale either, if you know what I mean. In heaven, there is no scale. You're either there by faith or you're not. Does that make sense? Do you see what I'm saying? You're saved. Salvation is a gift of God through your faith. Let me give you one more scripture to nail this down. 2 Timothy 1.9 For God saved us and called us to live a holy life. God saved us and called us to live a holy life. I'm not talking about your actions. I'm talking about what you believe, what you think, what your attitude is, and how you speak. 
If you can clear those things up, guess what? You will act right. Amen? He did this not because we deserved it. You and I do not deserve this salvation. I think he's making this very clear, isn't he? But because that was his plan from the beginning of time to show us his grace through Christ Jesus. Listen to this. God's taken you out of sin and put you into Christ. Aren't you glad? Oh, come on. Aren't you glad, church? Amen. You're no longer a sinner. Hallelujah. You've been taken out of sin. And now you are a Christian. You're in Christ. Hallelujah. Praise God. Yeah, you're going to sin sometimes, right? But that's not who you are now. That is not indicative of who you are when you make mistakes. All of us need to begin to see ourselves as God sees us. He sees you so much differently than you see yourself. Did you hear me? He sees you so much differently than you see yourself. You know, when my kids were little and they'd break something or make a mistake, they, think, they thought sometimes I was mad at them and I, didn't, I saw them as a mistake. But in reality, they just made a mistake and they were still my sons and I still loved them. Amen? Yeah. Same way with us. Our bodies and minds didn't change when we came to faith, but we did receive a new spirit. We still have some stinking thinking, right? We have some growing to do. Amen? And God's growing all of us from the inside out, not from the outside in. All right? Let's take smoking, for instance. Smoking is a great thing to quit. Amen? And I know some people have problems with it, right? Smoking is not going to keep you out of heaven, but it might get you there a little faster. It's not good, right? And if God, if you smoke and God speaks to you to stop smoking, that's a wonderful thing. Amen? I'll tell you what, though. Sometimes I think a person that has a stinking attitude is a lot worse than somebody who smells like a cigarette. Are you hearing me this morning? Somebody that has a lousy attitude that's judgmental and negative and critical. Yee. I don't know about that kind of person. We need to put him in the back. He can go back there and play. Yeah, write that in the back. <laughs> I like to dance too. <laughs> there he goes. All right. I want you to know God's moving and working in you. He wants you to enjoy your Christian life. He, he's, he doesn't want you to go through life miserable. He doesn't want you to go through life thinking that everything has to work out the way you want it or you're not going to be happy. That's stinking thinking. Are you hearing me? When you try to make God do it your way, good luck. You think you're hard-headed. Oh, my Lord. You're not going to move God like that. Amen? What you want to do is submit yourself and surrender to God and follow Him. Be a disciple. Right? Amen. James 1.21, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your life. Wow, that's a big, big statement right there. By humbly accepting the word God has planted where? He's planted the word in you. The seed of the word of God has been planted in your life. And it's able to save your soul. What is your soul? Everybody point to your head. It's your mind, your will, and your emotions. God is interested in saving those parts of your life so that you can think right, make quality decisions, have a great life. Amen? Come on, amen? I mean, God wants you to have a great life. Above average. Hey, when, I, when it comes time for me and I'm walking on those eternal shores, I'm hoping when they look at this church and they think about me, they, don't, you know, they know that God did something in that guy's life. We're not sure what it was, but He did something in him. I'm not sure, but... What kind of legacy are you going to leave when you leave this place? I want to leave a legacy of faith and trust in the Lord, of helping other people more than I tried to help myself. Amen. Amen. I had three boys. When it got to the dinner table, let me tell you, they love to help themselves. Our middle son, who now lives in Mexico, he used to take so much food on his plate, I knew he could never eat it all. But you know why he did it, right? 
because he had an older brother and a younger brother, and he didn't want them to get that much. He wanted to get more than they had. God wants you to know this morning, He has got plenty for you. He's got more than enough for you. He's able to bring you through every test and every trial that you're going through. He loves you. If you feel broken inside, join the club. That's the way we're supposed to feel because we are broken. And Jesus says, when you're broken, I'm right there with you. It's when we think we got it all together and we're going to make it work, then God's going, wait a minute, are you done yet? And that old song that I love so much, He sings to you and me this morning, let it go, let it go. We hang on to stuff and we have to have things a certain way and God's saying, let it go. Let your life go. Trust me. Believe in me. I'll make things work. This salvation He's speaking of, the saving of the soul, is a, is a coming to health and wholeness for us. God wants you to be healthy in your thinking and your emotions this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I see a lot of people who live by how they feel. One day they feel good. Everything's great. The next day they feel bad. Everything's lousy. Right? God doesn't want you to live this life. He wants you to start living this way. Do you see this? On the up. Amen. How do you do that? I'll tell you what, sometimes I just never let myself get too up or too down. I enjoy it. I'm thankful, aren't you, for the good things that God gives your life? Yeah. Amen. But I also know there's tests and trials around the corner. It's not always going to be that way. Amen. I'm going to say stop solid and strong for Jesus, and I'm not going to give up. Hallelujah. It's a process that we're all experiencing. How's your journey going? Remember, it's not where you're going that's the big deal. It's how you enjoy the journey on the way. Amen? I'm going to enjoy this journey. I'm going to accept God's peace in the midst of storms and problems and issues. How about you? I'm going to accept His life that's living and working in me. On my way here now, I've renamed Town Line and Tower Line and Springfield Road. Springfield Road is now Thankful Road. So from the time I get on Springfield Road till I turn left on uh, Town Line... <coughs> It's nothing but thankfulness. I will not allow myself to say anything except thank you, Father. Thank you for this truck. Thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my family. I love you guys. You're awesome. Thank you for your word. Thank you, thank you, thank you. That's all. If you do that, you know what will happen to you? You might just get a little happy. That lemon that's in your mouth might just pop right out. And you'll be able to smile a little bit. Now, town line has become who I am in Christ Road. So as I'm driving, and Mark and Panky and I were talking, and I know that Scott does this too, go out and drive around sometimes and pray. It's a good place to kind of get, you know, nothing's, you know, you can't hear anything, especially when you're on a motorcycle, I suppose. But, you know, you're just kind of locked in and you can really talk to the Lord. And you don't have any distractions, right? Man, I'll tell you, who we are in Christ Road, identity road, man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I'm your son. Thank you that you give me a brand new life. Thank you that I'm forgiven. Hallelujah. Come on, y'all. Come on now. Sometimes we don't are we're just not thinking about the right things. You gotta think about what you're thinking about, right? Seriously, I could sit in the truck on my way here. I could think, oh God, now what do I gotta do today? You know, I don't even think about that anymore. I got it all written down, so I don't have to worry about it. I just go open it up and read. That's what you got to do today. So on the way, I'm just, thank you, Father God, hallelujah, that you said I'm healed in Jesus' name. Father, I receive your healing even as I'm driving, Lord. Thank you, Father. Now, I would recommend if you're driving and you're praying, don't shut your eyes. Just keep your eyes open. Or at least keep one open. But thank you, Father God, that I'm, you know, that you've made me your son. You've adopted me as your own. Hallelujah. I'm your kid. And I don't know why you would have done it before. You know, why you got a bad deal out of this, but anyway, you, you went ahead and took me anyway, so I thank you for that. I ain't going to question your love. Oh, yeah, thank you for your love today. Isn't this love awesome? Amen. And you got to let go of your life. So I got three quick points and talk a little bit about uh, baptism, and then we'll go outside and, and uh, bath, baptize, as my, niece, uh, my uh, granddaughter used to say. She wanted to be baptized. Number one, we must receive God's love. It is who God is. He is love. You need to receive His love today. Not the teaching, but the revelation of what His love is. 
God is love. He loves you. It's agape love. It's unconditional love. He loves you when you do well. He loves you the same when you do ill. When you make mistakes, He calls you not a mistake. Some of you, when you were growing up, when you made mistakes, that's what they called you. A little mistake. A little bundle of whatever. Negativity. And God's saying this morning that that is not you now that you are in Christ. Amen? You are loved. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. Then Christ will make His home in your hearts as you trust Him. Your roots will go grow down into what? God's love. And that's what will keep you strong. When you're going through tests and trials and, you, and it looks like everything's going to fall and nothing's going to work out right and you know God loves you, is He going to work it out for you one way or the other? Yes. Isn't that true? So you know that and you have that strength that comes in your heart because you know He loves you. Verse 18, you may have the power to understand as all God's people should. Now listen to this. We need to be more expert in the way that we love. We need to be more expert in the way that we receive love. We need to increase in our ability to love ourselves, God, and each other. To understand, as all God's people should, how deep, I'm sorry, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep His love truly is. You that are going to get water baptized today, think of that trough out there full of water as God's love, and you're just going to go right down into His love. You're going to be surrounded by it. You're going to be under the water. When I look up and see your two little beady eyes looking up through the water, well, hopefully not doing that. When I see you underneath, your, just think of yourself as totally immersed in the love of God. 19, verse 19, may you experience the love of Christ. I hope that you have experienced His love though it is too great to understand fully. Then you'll be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. How do you become complete in God? Oh, well, you've got to go to you know, cemetery. I mean, seminary. You've got you to read the book. You've got you to live right. You know, blah, blah, blah. No, it says here is you got to know the love of God. If you know the love of God, that brings fullness of life and power. Knowing the love of God brings fullness of life and power. We all need a baptism of His love inside our soul. Can you say amen? Amen. Number two. <laughs> Hallelujah. Get that boy some coffee. We must receive God's forgiveness. Now some of these are very simple, but as I was studying and reading these, week, I really don't know if I understand exactly what God is saying here. What it fully means. But we must learn to receive God's forgiveness. Have you forgiven yourself fully yet? You know how I can tell if I talk to some of you and we get to really talking? A lot of the stuff that will come out of your mouth will be regrets and issues from your past that you still feel condemned over and you still have not received fully the love of God and the forgiveness of God. He wants you to live with no regrets, letting go the pain of the past. Those three words have just been resonating in my heart for the last couple of weeks. As believers, look at me, we need to learn to let it go. Well, you don't know, she died. Let, it, let her go. She's with the Lord. But you don't understand, I lost that job. It's almost, let it go. God will give you another one. Amen? Do you realize, you may get a hundred years on this planet. That's how big it is compared to eternity. That's where you're going to live. And what you do now echoes through eternity. So let's make our life count. Amen? Let's do something for Jesus. Let's give to somebody that doesn't deserve it. Amen? Hallelujah. And I want you to really start asking God for things you don't think you deserve. He loves to give you stuff you don't deserve because then He knows that you know that He's the one who did it. Well, I was really good this week, Lord. I went to church twice. Uh, I, gave, I gave $5. And when that clerk messed me up, I didn't cuss. Or that's not how God works, right? Ooh, you're looking at me like you think He does, but that's not how He does things. No. No, no. He wants you to enjoy your life. You're not around there trying to take score, right? That's called religion. We're not here to be religious. 
We're here to develop our relationship with Jesus. Amen. I'm a little Swedish. He wants you to get up every morning and enjoy your relationship with God. Not just today. Today's practice for Monday through Friday. Wednesday night is practice for Monday through Sunday. Right? Hallelujah. Seems that those who are forgiven, I want you to hear this this morning. Those who are forgiven for much, love much. This is Luke 7. I love this story that Jesus told. lady was with him and she anointed his feet with this precious ointment. And he says this about her. I tell you, her sins, and they are many. You ever feel like you had lots of sins? Have been forgiven. Because her sins have been forgiven, because she did so much wrong, she has shown me much love. A person who is forgiven for little shows only little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, Your sins are forgiven and your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Wow. I hear some people say, You know, I've done too many things wrong. Then that means you could love God more than anybody else because you know how much He's forgiven you for. Instead of just a teacup full, God's forgiven you a, a lake full of sin. Amen? That makes me love Him even more. How about you? Hallelujah. It's like He came up and said, Okay, what's your mortgage? I'm going to pay it off for you right now. Would you be thankful? Would you be thankful? Yeah, a lot of you would be thankful. He's already done that for you for your sin. He's taken all your sin and He's given you a get out of hell free card. <laughs> Hallelujah. You ain't going there. And you don't have to live in here. Get your head up. Let's go. Get your eyes up. Praise God. You have not only got His love living in you, you also have His forgiveness, a great key. We all need a baptism of forgiveness, include a, including, and this is really big, forgiving yourself. Number three, we must forgive completely all those who have wronged us. Oh, this is fun to do. You've all done that, right? Everybody say yes. Luke 6.27, he says, love and forgive. And the way you do it is, number one, you love your enemies. Oh, we do that really well, don't we? We need some practice at that, don't we? Yeah, we all need a little practice at loving enemies. Oh, it says the way to do that is to pray for them. It's really hard to hate somebody and be mad at them. I'm going to get you back for that, buddy. I heard what you said. Ugh. Oh, that's right. God said for me to forgive him. i got to pray for him. Lord, <laughs> I'm praying that he goes home to see you quickly. No, no, that's not the right kind of prayer. Let him walk into Derby and get hit by a... Bu no, that's not praying right. you got to bless him in the name. Father, help him. Bless him. I had to practice this. Several times. I want to tell you, some of you that have been here for a while know how I had to practice this. Right? Several times. Had somebody that was in, the, in church and that said lots of lies and did a lot of things that were very hurtful. I want to tell you, the first thing was to put my hands together. It wasn't to put my hands together to pray, but to rather put my hands together around that person's neck. I found out just exactly how big and spiritual I really was. I wasn't that big or spiritual. God had to test me in that area. You know what happened? They left, but I prayed for them, and I prayed for them, and it hurt me to pray for them. God, bless them. Oh my. You know, I really wanted to say, God, oh man, you got a big ball peen hammer, Lord. Just, you know, if you're not doing anything with it, just let them hit it, get it, you know, but no. That isn't right, right? Loving people who make themselves your enemies can be even your own family. I'll tell you, Uncle Bob, if he comes to this Christmas this year, I'll tell you what, <laughs> I'm going to send him to the moon. <laughs> family, ooh. Sometimes you've got to learn how to forgive folks in your family, do you not? You have to learn to forgive people who have wronged you and hurt you. Now, I'm... I've been involved with Celebrate Recovery, been in AA a few times and helped up at a thing called Lifeway at Pekin Hospital back in the day with teenagers that were involved in alcohol and drug addiction. And one of the first principles they have to learn is to learn to forgive. They don't want to forgive anybody. They certainly don't want to forgive people who hurt them. They want to get them back. They have to learn how to forgive. 
And guess the next thing you're supposed to do? You pray for them. <clears throat> this is a really good one too. Do good to them. Maybe buy them something and take it and give it to them. This is your enemy I'm talking about. So Uncle Bob comes to Christmas. Here, Bob, here's your present. Man, I hope it blows up. No. <laughs> no, you love Uncle Bob, so you give him that favorite tie he always wanted or whatever it is. You have to do good to people who are your enemies. Ooh, this is hard. Hard to keep bad feelings about somebody as you pray for them and to give them something. And let me give you a clue. I just want to, I want to encourage everyone in here, please, don't get on the phone, Facebook, or text and say, did you hear about sister so-and-so? I want to talk to you about them. And Oh, by the way, maybe we'll pray for them later on. No gossiping, please. Let's just talk to the Lord about the people that have needs. I thought you guys would be jumping up and down over that one. Here's another recommendation for you this morning as you forgive yourself and you forgive others. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Stop blaming other people for your problems. Amen? Take them on yourself. Help, you can't get them solved if you don't admit you have them. Right? We don't live in denial. That's a river in Egypt. We live in reality. And reality is don't blame somebody else for your problems. You take responsibility for you. Somebody said, well, you don't know what they did to me. It doesn't matter what they did to you. In the long run, it matters how you respond to what they did to you. Some of you are going through tests right now because God is testing you to see, for you to see your response to what they do. And what your response is, is I can't believe they did that to me. I'm going to get them for that. They call themselves a Christian. I'm never going to talk to them again. That's not godly attitudes. Can you say amen? amen. Instead... You pray for them and you do good to them. Amen? Hallelujah. Help them, Lord. Bless them, Father. And help me to be a blessing to them, Father God. And help me not to point fingers and tell them that it's their fault. I take responsibility for me. You know, they call that a pity pot. Have you ever heard that before? That phrase before? You don't want to go down into the pit. Amen? God's drawn you out of the pit. Stay out of the pit. Get off the pity pot. Oh, woe is me. You know that song, right? Nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows but Jesus. Get off the pity pot. Take responsibility. Tell God you need His help. Amen? And start counting your blessings instead. Some people can only see what's not there. God wants you to start training yourself to see the good things that are there. Hallelujah. Amen? You got, how many in here have a job? Praise God. Blessings you have. Are you a blessing on your job? Do you go to your job with, oh, praise God, I've got to go to work today. I mean, I get to go to work today. Hallelujah. I am so thankful, Lord, you put me in this place. And I've heard people say, but there's no Christians there. Well, maybe that's why God put you there. Maybe you're supposed to be the light in a dark place. Well, I want to work with all Christians. Well, too bad. God's put you somewhere where there ain't any. You convert them and make them Christians. Start telling them the Word. Start walking it out in front of them. Hallelujah. And when you come to work with a little skip in your step, Hallelujah, I'm here today, guys. All right, here we go. Doing the same, Whatever it is that you do, get a good attitude in it and be thankful that God gave you the job in the first place. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, but Pastor Mark, you don't know how bad they are over there. Well, I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if they're bad, God's put you there because you're good. And you're going to take their bad, a little salt from you, a little light from you, and the whole thing can change. Amen? Hallelujah. That's what water baptism means today. You stop blaming other people. You've taken responsibility for yourself, and you've asked Christ in your life. This is Romans 6.3. We are baptized into His death. A death for us is that we die to our old life, and we let the pain the regret, and the unforgiveness of the past, go. Let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Romans 6.4, we totally immerse people in water. We don't sprinkle them with water. 
Now, I was raised Lutheran where they took babies and sprinkled them with water when they're little, right? How many have been in situations at churches like that besides me? A lot of you have. All right, do you know why they do that? One of the reasons is because Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me and forbid them not, for such as is the kingdom of heaven. A little lame, but that's their, one of their scriptures that they use. But really the reason is, is fear. These denominations have, have fear in their doctrines and their teachings that when that baby dies, if that baby dies without being water baptized, they go to hell. I don't believe that's true. But they, that's why they sprinkle baptize them when they're little. Can I be honest with you that are older now, that you're adults? That doesn't count. You've got to get re-water baptized. If you haven't been yet, you can do it today. If we don't have a towel, we'll go across the street and get you one. But we're gonna, we'll dunk you. Baptizo in the Greek language means to be totally immersed, not sprinkled. The idea is, is that your old life's going to go down under the water. And we're going to leave it there and bring out your new life in Christ so that you can walk in the newness of life. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> That's a good thing. In fact, Scott and I were standing out there with Will today. He was like, I think I need to get re-water baptized. Sounds good to me. I said, yeah, maybe we'll just baptize each other. I mean, I've been water baptized by my pastor back several years ago. It was before they had running water. We had to, you know, I'm just kidding. We were buried with him through baptism to death. What kind of death? Listen to me. God wants you to die to your own will. Did you know that? Oh, but I think I know what's going on. No, God does. You don't. You want his will, right? So in everything that you're doing, Father, what's your will for me in this situation? Ask him, would you? How many will ask him before you make a decision? Raise your hand. Anybody? Good. You guys will make good decisions. And the rest of you, we're praying for you. Dying to your will, picking up your cross daily, the purpose of God for you. Dying to your feelings of worthlessness, knowing that He paid a great price for our freedom and our new life. Amen? The rest of Romans 6 4. Just as Christ was raised from the dead, that's what we believe this morning. Our faith in Christ means that He took our sins. We sang it about it today. He was crushed for our sins bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon Him, and by His stripes we are healed. Isaiah 53. Okay? He paid a great price for our freedom and our new life. And He was raised from the dead. We believe that. Do you believe that this morning? That's what makes you a Christian. Amen? This is what we believe. This is what gives us new life. He was raised by the glory of the Father, even so we should also walk in the newness of life. I love that phrase, walk in the fresh newness of life. Come on, let's go. When are you supposed to do that? Well, just Sunday morning. No. When you go home this afternoon, Monday morning when you get up bright and bushy-tailed, ready to go to work. Colossians 3.1, since we have been raised with Christ, and when we go down we take this person down into the water, they're going to be raised with Christ. Dying with Christ, raised with Christ. Does that, does that make sense? Dying with Jesus, buried with Him in baptism, raised to new life in Jesus, just like He was raised to new life. He said, when, since you've been raised with Christ, delight yourself by seeking... I love that word, delight. I don't know how many of you got the morning meds this week, but every day was some a different part of delight. That's an awesome word. Delight yourself by seeking after those things which are above, the spiritual things, which means you put God first. How many promise to put God first in your life? Say amen and raise your hand. Amen. Very good. For you that didn't, we're praying for you. Colossians 3.9 Since you have put off the old man, like in the water baptism today, that old man's going down, right? We're going to leave the old man there, correct? Amen. And let the old life go. Let the old life go. But Pastor Mark, I might still sin, but that's not who you are anymore. You're not that person. You're still trying to train this to get away from that person. Amen? Letting go of the old life coming out of the water into the new life. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. All right. Who are the candidates that are going to get baptized? Would you guys please come forward?
all the candidates just come stand right here. They're going to get baptized today. Did you bring towels? Bring your towels with you. Now, church, we're going to go outside. The baptismal is right out here. And we're going to do this right now. If you'd like to stay and watch this, that would be wonderful. I'd like to have all the candidates just sit in the front row here to my left, if you would, instead of stand, just sit here. Hallelujah. Yeah. Just have, grab a seat, you guys. There's our four candidates. Aren't they a good-looking group? Amen. <laughs> Praise God. I'm going to have you all stand, if you would, and just bow your heads real quick for just a minute. This morning, before we go water baptize these folks, I want to make sure that all of you have come to faith in Christ at some time in your life. This doesn't, you know, I was raised in a Lutheran church and I went through confirmation, but I really never had received Jesus in my heart because they didn't tell me I had to. When I found out at age 19 that I needed to receive Jesus by faith, I did that. This morning, while every head's bowed and your eyes are closed, nobody looking around for just a second, if you need to ask Jesus, into your heart and become a brand new creation like I did uh, you know, when I was age 19. If you need to do that, just raise your hand real quick. Anybody this morning that needs to receive Jesus this morning? I see that hand. Anybody else that needs to receive Jesus this morning? I've never done it before. Amen. I see these hands. Hallelujah. Keep your hands up if you would for just a second. just want you to pray this with me. Father God, I ask you to forgive me of my sins and come into my heart. Live big in me, Father. I thank You that Jesus is alive and that He lives in me. I believe it. In Jesus' name, Amen. We've had two people do this this morning. Let's give them a hand. Praise God. Now, for you that did this this morning, we have a couple of booklets over here about what you just did and a Bible if you'd like to get one. Gary and Jan will give them to you if they're going to, you're going to be sticking around for just a minute. If you'd like to get one, there's a guy in the back. So if you'd like to get one of those, just see them. They're right up here. Raise your hands. And they will give you one of those things free and postpaid. Yes, Martin. Okay, just a minute. We, maybe we'll do that. Hang on. All right. Now, while your heads are bowed and your eyes are closed, just one more second. Just got one more question I want to ask. Maybe this morning your life in God is not where you want it to be and you want to go forward more in the Lord. Just raise your hand if that's you. Yep, i got my hands up for that too. Father, we just pray in Jesus' name you bless all of us, Lord God, as we continue to desire to walk in the fullness of joy and peace, to enjoy your presence, to trust you, to walk in faith, and just, just enjoy all the blessings, Jesus, that you've already bought for us. We rest from our work. We thank you for the work of Christ. We thank you that we're in Christ. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. Amen. All right. Um, We'll sing. Next week, we'll sing Lori, Happy Birthday. Let's get the four of you right outside. Just walk right out here to the trough. If you want to stay, you're welcome to come and watch this. If you don't, you are dismissed. God bless you. We'll see you on Wednesday.